Jazz Juniors Network Conference, which is held uh, by a Film and Jazz Music Foundation with a great support of Adam Mickiewicz Institute and ICE Krakow Congress Center, represented by Paula van der Roska, director for ICE Krakow Congress Center and president of the board in Polish Conference and Congress Association, and Michał Hajduk, music expert from Adam Mickiewicz Institute. Paula? Good morning, everyone. I'd like to take this opportunity to extend a warm welcome to all of you on behalf of uh, Ms. Isabella Helbin, director of the Krakow Festival Office, to the ICE Krakow Congress Center. This venue is a business and cultural flagship of the city. As you have surely noticed, we are located in the very heart of the city, being a convenient place for the organization of diverse events. Uh, from international conferences, congresses, symposiums and business meetings through cultural events such as concerts, uh, opera, theatrical and uh, uh, ballet performances to social meetings. Uh, our main motto for the next several years is be together. What does it mean? Be together is, uh, means to strive to achieve similar goals and create our own independent uh, contact uh, network. And this idea of networking allows us to be linked to Jazz Juniors festivals. And it is a great pleasure for us to announce, uh, after a few years of uh, cooperation, that we are very proud uh, to have played a role in the developing of young, aspiring artists. So let's begin with upcoming workshops, uh, presentations, and discussions. Michal. Ladies and gentlemen, um, <clears throat> I believe jazz is pretty much about improvisation, so I haven't prepared anything. I'm going to improvise. Um, Adam Mickiewicz Institute is uh, working with uh, Jazz Juniors Festivals for four or five years, I believe. And uh, since we are based to promote Polish art artists abroad, at, uh, from the certain moment we uh, fully understood we need to work locally, we need to build capacity here, we need to strengthen the belief in the local scene. So um, there are many reasons why, why we do cooperate, but Two most important is Just Juniors is perfect selection of a young emerging artist. And if you want to know what's going to happen in Polish jazz very next in a few minutes from now, you look at the, you look at the uh, um, young artists who are applying here, and basically it seems like everyone is winner. So this is reason number two or number one. Reason number two is. Um, we need more and more festivals which are international in more aspects than bringing uh, international means American or European headliners, but also in terms of building community. And, uh, and this is what it's all about. I believe uh, the biggest value is relationships, friendships coming hand in hand with business. And this is what's happening at uh, Just Juniors. Thank you. So, uh, the network of Just Juniors uh, Festival in competition after five years of hard work means hundreds of international concerts and different festivals, international tours and recording sessions, all for our Just Juniors competition winners. And it would not be possible to happen without support that we get from our international partner, Council. So, let me introduce uh, the Council. Josh Grossman, Artistic Director at Toronto Downtown Jazz, Canada. Adam Huang, uh, Vice President of Chinese Jazz Association and founder of Beijing Nine Gains International Jazz Festival. Enrico Moccia, founder of M Produzioni Musicali and Artistic Director of Fara Music Festival, Italy. Uh, Jaroslav Sartakov, Program Director of Ural Terrages, Russia. 
Wojciech Siwek, one of the founders of Jazz na Odrą Festival, Polska. Iwan Blagojewicz, founder and general manager, manager of Nisville Jazz Festival, Serbia. Tamas Bognar, uh, program director of Opus Jazz Club, Hungary. Jakub Krzeszowski, founder at, and project manager of Jazz Po Polsku project, Pol Polska China. And Rad Kozajcza, Jazz Festival, Croatia. And uh, Michał mentioned that uh, perfect selection of Jazz Jones competition. So last, last but not least, uh, and the most important person for Jazz Juniors Festival nowadays, I would like to introduce you to our new artistic director and a, a chairman of uh, Jazz Juniors competition, Mr. Adam Pierończyk. <laughs> and now let me ask Ms. Magdalena Doxa Tverberg, uh, Deputy Director of the Culture and National Heritage Department of the city of Krakow to start the Jazz Juniors Network. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My presence here is not just by accident and uh, only because you are in Krakow and that's why we just welcome our guests. It's also because uh, city of Krakow support this festival in this actual uh, uh, image, we can say, but from the very beginning, uh, it's uh, financial support. I would like to tell you some uh, history facts about our connection with jazz and uh, try to maybe uh, encourage you to search for some uh, traces I will mention in my presentation in a city if you will have time later. Is Krakow the capital of Polish jazz? I'm convinced that we can make such a claim. It was Krakow that soon after World War, uh, World War II produced or attracted a great many young musicians in interested in jazz, many of whom began their careers in this city. This was the case, for instance, with Jerzy Duduś Matuszkiewicz, born in 1928, who made his first steps in uh, Turewicz's orchestra playing in Krakow's cafes and restaurants. Following the dissolution of the Polish YMCA, which was the cradle of Polish jazz in 1949, just went underground, also in Krakow. But from then on, it was played, among others, in private flats, including this most famous, uh, belong to Witold Kujawski at Stratum Street, which soon became a cult venue. Kujawski's bed seats and the room in uh, St. John Street, occupied by pianist Andrzej Kurelewicz, uh, was the main points at this time connected with jazz. Uh, Andrzej Kurelewicz is the musician who played at dance parties in the Rotunda Club in Oleandre Street that you may be heard about. And I don't mention this uh, club only like that, but uh, this was exactly the beginning of Jazz uh, Juniors Festival. This was the place where this festival was born. The first official Krakow-based band performing something close to jazz, MM-1676, was founded in 1954. Its leader was Jerzy Borowiec, who played the clarinet and the sax, while one of the members was Andrzej Kurelewicz, mentioned above, on the piano. Following auditions for a vocalist, this ensemble was joined by Wanda Warska, our Polish fame who after the breakup of MM176 would sing in Kurelewicz Quintet. The next, the next uh, breakthrough came uh, on All Souls Day 1954, when the first ever Krakow All Souls festivals was held in a rented primary school classroom uh, in one of the Krakow street. Musician and the jazz fans flocked to this first nationwide jam session from all over Poland. From 1956, the festival was organized by Jazz Club Helicon, 
to die, the Krakow All Souls Jazz Festival, called Zaduszki Jazzowe, is the oldest ev event of this kind held in Poland and one of the two oldest jazz events in the world, organized just uh, as long as Newport Jazz Festival in the USA. And the 64th edition of this festival was held at this year. The opening of the already mentioned Helicon Club, which uh, excited uh, for 10 years, 19, oh, over 10 years, 1956-1969, was a major point, major point in Krakow's his jazz history. It was in this jazz club that all the major Polish jazz musicians of that time embarked their careers, from Krzysztof Komeda, Tomasz Stańko, Adam Makowicz, to Andrzej Dobrowski, Zbigniew Seifert, Janusz Stefański, and Janusz Muniak. True today, Jazz Club Helicon has become history. The present day landscape of Krakow's jazz is still shaped, most of all, by its numerous jazz clubs, of which Krakow has more than any other city in Poland. These are first and foremost Piet's Art Acoustic Jazz Club, Alchemia, Harris Piano Jazz Bar, as well as the two oldest ones, Jazz Club Umuniaka and Piwnica pod Baranami. Many of them are located in the very centrum of the city. Krakow also has the greatest number of jazz festivals and competitions. In this category, we should mention the International Festival Young and Old Jazz in Krakow, which has been held annually without intermission since 1995. Just one year younger is the Summer Jazz Festival Krakow, previously known as the Summer Jazz Festival in the, in the uh, Piwnica pod Baranami, which attracts both Polish and international stars. The Jazz Night we organize in uh, July is held by the city of Krakow and is uh, part of this exact event. We also have the Krakow Jazz Autumn, which focuses on free jazz and improvised music. Finally, there are Biennale International competitions which commemorate the great departed jazzmen whose life and work was associated with the city with the city of Krakow. And this is the international Jarek Śmietana Jazz Guitar Competition and the Zbigniew Seifert International Jazz Violin Competition. The oldest of Krakow's jazz festivals and competitions founded in 1976, sorry, is Jazz Juniors, of which you are now very welcome guests. Jazz Juniors is one of the most significant and colorful chapter in Polish jazz history. It was at this event that such no highly uh, regarded Polish musicians are, as Leszek Mosder, Krzysztof Ścierański, Zbigniew Wegehaupt, Marek Bałata, the Niedziela Brothers or the Pospieszalski Brothers, the band's new presentation, Walk Away, as well as younger names probably familiar to you. Stanisław Słowiński, Bartosz Dworak, Paweł Kaczmarczyk and Piotr Orzechowski, Piano Hooligan, won their first awards in recent year. It won the first awards in this competition. Recently, Just Junior has become an international platform for the exchange of experiences and the international promotion of young artists our competition winners. We have also concentrated on building an international network of contacts, the Jazz Juniors Network, whose conference I'm here to open. As of this year, of this year's 43rd ex edition of Jazz Juniors, the post of the Jazz Juniors Festival Artistic Director has, be, be, uh, has been taken by um, Adam Pierończyk, that we were welcome previously, who is here with us today as the most popular, I will say, saxophonist in Poland, uh, great fame, and this is our great proud that uh, Ms., Ms., uh, Mr. Andrzej Pierończyk uh, agreed to uh, be a leader of this, uh, program leader of this festival. 
Uh, I wish you all, ladies and gentlemen, interesting talks, inspiring discussions, and encourage, I encourage young artists to um, get connected with all important people here. I hope it will uh, allow them to start their careers and travel all over the world from Krakow to China or Canada. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ula Novak, and I got the privilege to introduce our guests. And also, I will try my best to make us sure that we are on time with all the panels. The next one will be called Artist Presentation, Choose Your Own Destiny, the classic game of truth or dare. And in a while, I will hand over the microphone to Michał Hajduk from Adam Mickiewicz Institute. And we'll invite first artists, first band, which takes part in this year's contest, and it will be Semiotic Quintet. But I'm not sure they are already on here or not yet. Of course, just musicians, but anyway, I will check or will ask someone to check. In the meantime, um, I will try to uh, introduce you the idea because basically you've been, uh, you had a chance to see all those artists uh, playing live on stage. But there is a second part, uh, there is a talent and there is, there is a business part. Being ready to, uh, being ready for bookings, being ready for searching for record labels, uh, contacts with press and, and journalists, etc., etc., etc. So um, I believe the most important part here is personal contact. Do we have those guys here? Huh? Oh, they are in the elevator. That's, that's actually a good, good catch because basically what we're going to do is uh, it's called elevator pitch. But we didn't want it to call it this way because it's worn out. Um, Dzień dobry. Ciao. Cześć. Michał Hajduk. Um, yeah, to be continued. Okay, so uh, let's let's get back to to, to the idea. So uh, usually it looks like uh, you got a band. Here is the band, and uh, and and they are one man army. I I think he deserves a uh, bigger applause because he's here for the for the whole band. So. Um, we decided we're going to try the new formula for that for that kind of introduction, which is uh, uh, hopefully going to happen uh, luckily. So we called it true for there, and we prepared some questions those poor guys don't know, and they're going to choose and pick those questions. Uh, we have three questions for you. We don't know which questions you're gonna uh, you're gonna get. Uh, we got also one challenge, and uh, if you're not comfortable with any questions, you can uh, you can change it for a challenge, but you can't do it the other way around, if that's Thanks. clear. And uh, most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, you are uh, free to interrupt and ask questions, and this is, I think, also the most important part. If you are curious to to know this gentleman uh, closer, please please do it. So let's make it more interactive. Um. The, the, unfortunately, today the three fifths of the band uh, is ill, so 
I suppose we can't really count that they will come. Okay, so. just to, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot about it. We're gonna start from short video from, uh, from the performance. Some really interesting composition going on here. I especially enjoy the way that the, the band sort of moved from more structured music into sort of more freedom. I enjoyed all the solos, the interplay between the bands as well. I felt like there's a lot of, lot of mature playing going on here. And the compositions are really interesting as well, using the different instruments really well, using the textures and the tones, uh, combining the guitar, for example, the guitar lead with the saxophone. Uh, that was uh, a very interesting. Uh, I think they did a great job of, of taking advantage of the sounds that these instruments make alone and then combining them together as well. I thought the, the soloing was very mature and just the flow of the music as well. The fact that some of the tunes started a little more structured, then moved into the free, and then all of a sudden we were back into a more structure and then and then the tune wrapped up. I thought uh, all, the, all the playing was, uh, was quite mature and quite advanced for what is still a young and, and developing group. So uh, kudos to the band and look forward to hearing more about it. Oh, it's, All right. it's very nice so to hear this. Here is the kind of magic hat with the questions. Uh, you are privileged to, uh, to choose the number. Let's see how it goes. It's nine or, or six. <laughs> uh, sure, it's, which one is the better it's one? It's six because I made, uh, I made a dot on. Um, Nine. And the question is, um, imagine you find a gin in a bottle, or uh, since we are in Poland, that would be a goldfish, and you get some, uh, some three wishes. Uh, these are three wishes for, for, obviously, for a band. So what that would be? Well, yeah, it's. Um, Do you need some time for uh, for to Yeah, to I, I, would, I would need, I think, like about 30 or 40 seconds to really yeah, think this over. Yeah, let's let's do it, please. Uh, I'm curious about uh, about the content of the elevator. Do we do we still ha still uh, have anyone in 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 the way here? Do we know anything about it? No. Uh, now I'm supposed to tell a joke, uh, just to yeah. We got we got a question. Perfect. We got a joke. That's even better. You said, imagine you found gin in the bottle. I would drink it. <laughs> it's too early. It's way too early. it's way too early for that kind of suggestion. But we still see each other in the in the evening. Okay. So, uh, you are uh, kind of uh, debuting, right? You're on your merging way. What do you think would be three mo most important f parts on, on, on your artistic way, wh wherever you go with, with the band? How, how, how do you feel about it? Well, I think the, um, the important thing uh, for bands to actually uh, start their career uh, is to make sure that you have uh, actually found your own sound and your conception of the music because I think that uh, there's a whole lot of people that are playing great and uh, they're very, very impressive musicians and very skilled musicians. Mm. But I think that having the, the vision of the sound of the band and the concepts that you want to present to the audience it's not that obvious, actually, and uh, I, uh, I would personally like to spend time first on developing a, a very convincing idea of the sound and the, the vision of music before I would present it. So I think this would be actually the, the first wish I'd had uh, for the goldfish to 
actually help me find this uh, sound that I will be satisfied and totally convinced to before I uh, really kick on with the records and stuff. I agree, it's pretty important. So uh, let's say you have it, like the, the gene or the fish made it. What, what do you think would be the next thing to, to, to achieve? Uh, well, if you are uh, satisfied with the uh, with your music, which is uh, actually the the product that you're presenting to the audience, then I think the, uh, it would be great to have really uh, impressive uh, promotion for for the for this thing. Uh, and this is where uh, I think the connections with the people from music business are really vital and. Uh, Developing a network of those connections would be, I think, the, the second thing I would ask for a band. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you got your own language, musical language, you got the presence in the media, you got the first shot. I think the uh, the first shot will be uh, it will be the, the thing of uh, being keeping an interest in uh, in music and creating it for the for the whole time and not uh, uh, not falling into some uh, periods of. Uh, that are less creative and when you feel less passionate about it because I think the maintaining the, the passion for the music is actually the, the, the most important thing because this is the thing that uh, drives you forward and makes uh, things possible that uh, even if they are if, if, even if, if they seem very hard and uh, barely possible at the beginning but you have, if you have the passion then I think it's everything is possible and this is the very important thing and this is the third wish I'd have for that. Uh, how do you think? What is the main obstacle uh, in in a in a state of creativity, like to be involved on, on the same <coughs> high level all the time? What, what is the main obstacle in that, in your opinion? Well, I think there are many obstacles you uh, you encounter as a musician. Uh, well, what was the the most important one? I think that the resources, money, time, and uh, uh, the w willingness of, uh, of of the whole group to cooperate in the same time, you know, those are the things that are uh, sometimes difficult to uh, really connect. And uh, but, but this is uh, actually the only uh, moment when you really can work and create. Um, so yeah, I think the the resources, so the the money and the time of the people and their willingness to and their passion to to really do the music, uh, the, this combination of those elements is the uh, the thing that makes things possible. I think. Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, I think this uh, gentleman deserves uh, real applause because he made a job for the whole band, <laughs> and. Uh, we can't, really we, we can't do, uh, I think we can't do a challenge part because this is addressed to the, to the team. So um, I would like to ask you if you got any, any questions, anything you, oh. Thanks, Michal. Um, which, uh, sorry? Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not understand, but my name is Adam Baruch and I'm a, I don't know. <laughs> we will talk about it later. But I, but I do write about music a lot. Uh, which uh, school did you finish? Uh, I'm still studying at the Academy of Music in Katowice. Still yes. studying? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we will see you in two days. Um, mm -hmm. um, all right. So um, when are you supposed to, to, to end your studies? One more year? Yes, it's still one more year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do you think that when you actually get the degree in your hand, which will hopefully happen. I'm sure it will happen, <laughs> especially with Thomas as the new headmaster. Uh, do you think 
prepared for your musical life with a diploma in your hand? Mm. Well, I don't think the, the diploma actually, uh, only the diploma changes anything uh, as far as it comes to music. I think it's, uh, it's actually, it might be helpful in getting a job, but uh, I think you have to be aware of uh, all of the, the other things that are necessary, uh, ranging from the musical skills to the business skills. So, yeah, I feel that there's uh, still a lot of work to do, uh, especially in this, uh, uh, in this music business department, I'd say. But uh, I think the, the awareness is the necessary step, and I feel that I will be uh, able to actually prepare myself well for the finish of my studies. Well, I, I understand that you want to be diplomatic, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no. But the question really was: uh, Do you think that uh, part of your basic education should, should also include, uh, you know, uh, courses in, let's say, uh, music management, uh, um, media handling, and so really preparing you for life in the music business? Yeah, I think it definitely should be included in the program. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Any more questions? Anybody? Come on. Yes, don't be shy. Okay, so I think we're going to wrap up uh, this one. Thank you so much. You did great. Thank you. So it means that we'll start the next panel, which will be moderated by, by one of the greatest Polish journalists. I can see already <laughs> he's with us. <laughs> Bartek Haczynski, who is related to culture and especially music topics and publishes for nationwide titles. And the title of the panel is How to Launch a Successful Career in Jazz. And I already introduce moderator please join us and the panelists will be Adam Pierończyk, Josh Grossman, Adam Huang, Jakub Krzyszowski and Michał Łyczek. Hello everybody. Um, uh, <laughs> we didn't met. But, uh, So, I'm working as a mainstream music journalist. I'm, I've got a special perspective on a bit of uh, on everything. I, I, I love jazz. And uh, the title of this panel is uh, How to Start Well a Career When any, Nobody Gives a Damn. Am I right? No. How to launch a successful career in jazz. It's more or less the same because uh, the starting point, no one gives, no one cares. Um, my guests uh, are, uh, beginning from the right, uh, uh, Adam Pierończyk, great saxophone player and uh, artistic festi uh, the director of this festival. Uh, then uh, Jakub, uh, 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 then uh, Michael, Michael uh, Wyczek, uh, Krakowskie Biuro Festiwalowe. Uh, Jakub Krzeszowski, founder of uh, Jazz Po Polsku project, uh, special project that is promoting uh, Polish jazz uh, abroad. Then uh, Adam Huang, uh, bass player from China. And uh, Josh Grossman, a trumpet player and director, uh, artistic director and conductor of uh, Toronto Jazz Orchestra. <laughs> to start well, not a career, but this discussion, we should define what the career in jazz means. Uh, what, uh, is, it, is it possible to compare uh, the career in jazz uh, with a career in pop music? Is it more or less the same? How would you define uh, the career in your 
uh, genre. Let's grab, grab the mics. Uh, it, it has to be a little bit of everything, I think. Um, um, you know, I had some conversations last year when I was here with some Polish musicians, and I think the situation varies from country to country and market to market. My impression is, as a jazz musician here in Poland, it is possible, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it is it does seem to be possible to make a career as a performing, full-time performing musician in Poland by touring around the country, and, uh, um, and because things are relatively close in Europe, getting out outside of Poland and getting into other places. I know in Canada, the number of, uh, I would say, full-time performing musicians who are exclusively performing on their instrument is pretty small. So these are people that are performing, but they're also doing some teaching, they're probably doing some composing, um, that sort of thing. So it's, it, you know, for where I'm coming from, a career in jazz is all kinds of things. It's not just getting proficient at your instrument. It has to be sort of varied and there has to be uh, a few different components to it. Adam Quang? Oh, yeah, your English is good. <laughs> my Polish is terrible though, so. <laughs> so I, I use my left hand to take this. Not, not for anything, just for s save my heart. You know? I need to hold something. So the, I get this uh, menu, uh, so they write down how to L-U-N-C-H uh, successful, you know. So that make me really confused. I know when I, when I, the day before when I was in Beijing, I think, wow, what's, what's that question? Oh my God. Okay. Um, I don't know. I mean, the, yeah, maybe I need to uh, uh, introduce myself a little bit more. A little bit more, like, <laughs> yeah, please, I, please do. Yeah, I'm the I'm the founder of uh, uh, Beijing Jazz Festival, and uh, I'm the founder of China Jazz Association. Uh, I'm the uh, founder of a, a one 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 thousand kilometer from Beijing to North the Changchun Jazz Festival. I'm the founder of one thousand and eight hundred kilometers. Uh, from West to the Xi'an Jazz Festival, I'm the founder of uh, so many. So, some people, my friend, uh, wow, Adam, your your life, your jazz life, like, uh, wow, look good, and uh, you're you're a very famous bass player in your country, and uh, you're the president of a uh, China Jazz Association. You are the founder of uh, a Beijing Jazz Festival. You are the ba ba ba. So. So I, I, I mean, I know, uh, I know so many things in my country. I know almost every every jazz musician in my country. Every everyone, uh, the jazz musician, they all <coughs> know me. And um, <coughs> I, <coughs> I work uh, uh, for jazz in my country for thir thirty years more, and then I never feel it's. Uh, it's like everything like anything like successful or anything like good i i still going to a really hard way you know you know you just presented a successful career but uh, uh, so 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 you, we, we may treat it as a definition of of, of a career yeah. in your in your case okay and, um, yeah i don't know how to say it's really hard to say that it's, uh, yeah, we, we just, uh, you know, we know my country, the, the situation there, all, all, everything about my country, so we, we just uh, focus on, yeah, the self, and then to, to hard work every day, that's all. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, let's move to Jakub Krzyszowski. Uh, what's the definition of the career in jazz? what we are talking about. Hello everyone, my name is Jakub Krzyszowski. I'm the founder of the Jazz Po Polsku Music Project, uh, which promotes Polish music abroad for many years, uh, actually mainly in Asia, but 
I do. Uh, I did a, a, a few things in Europe, but then I realized that it makes no sense personally for me. So that's why I focus on uh, market in Asia. So I would like to ask, what does it mean, successful career? <laughs> it's part of the question. We we are going to define a career in jazz. So, successful or not, but what, what what is a career? Is it gigging? Is it uh, is it recording? Is it uh, earning your life? Uh, um, yeah, I think I think it's it's everything. Like uh, recording, of course, is is very important. Performing live, even more important. I think the more most important thing is to playing music live because this is what for is music, uh, what it's all about to to play music live. So, uh, so how to start a successful career? I think uh, maybe you should uh, think about how would you like, where would you like to be in a few years, and and okay. make some plan, and try to figure out how to realize it in in this world where you have so strong competition everywhere actually. Briefly, like this is a very wide question, so it's. We are going to precise. We are going to precise it to to, to move to some uh, some details. Um, Mich uh, the, thank you, Mikhail Wicek. Uh, the same question about. Uh, I, I'd like I'd like us to meet on the common ground uh, to to know what we are talking about uh, when we imagine a career in jazz. That's why I asked this question. So what's uh, what's the career in jazz in? In your opinion. Yeah, so first of all, uh, it's a pleasure and honor to be in, to be here and then be a part of with, with such a great speaker here. So um, I work for the Krakow Festival Office. Uh, so we organize different type of events. Um, I'm also following the um, the young stage of of, of musical jazz scene in Poland. Um, and it's hard to say that sitting next to next to Adam Pironczyk, but also I'm also a saxophonist by myself. Um, so, so yeah, one more time, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, what is a jazz career? Career? Um, probably I, I I could say better what's not uh, a jazz career. So I think to have ten recordings, it's not a jazz career. I have like fifteen recordings, and and I'm I don't I'm not doing the jazz career. And you can play like thousands of gigs, and it's it's not making you as a, as a making a career. Um, uh, so because you you could play in a small, um, and you can you can uh, you can um, you can you can stand in in the same club for ten years, and it's it, it's it's probably not a career that you you would like to have. Um, but um, what's what's what could make a difference? It's probably the um, the reputation do you have that the uh, kind of fame that you could uh, you could get. So if you are on the cover of uh, of some um, important magazine, it's it's make you probably it could help you to be more successful instead of, of only only making uh, gigs. Of course, making gigs in the great hall makes also a step in your career. Um, and recording for the great labels, or yeah, just just good labels. So I will make that combination of, of component for the career. So that's that's just uh, not only having gigs, but having gigs in a, um, in a good places. Uh, not only recordings, but having uh, re recording in in the in the renewed label. Um, cooperating with 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 just legend probably that's also uh, part of the career. That's um, yeah, and the reputation that you have, that that the people know your name, even if that. Uh, so the the part of your question was also how we could compare this to the to the pop music career or something. So it's um, obvious that it's it's not the same um, scale. You can you can get the um, the publicity not 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 in the same scale, but but definitely be. Um, be visible in in this industry. Um, it's important, and it's uh, it will make you um, your career going on. Thank you very much. And uh, I, I I could shortly define a career in jazz uh, by uh, uh, telling somebody Adam Pieronczyk. <laughs> 
is the definition of it. But uh, what's your definition uh, of, of, the, of the career in jazz? Hello. Uh, thanks for having me here. I think um, uh, jazz music, all about jazz music, is, uh, jazz music is, is about freedom um, at first for me. So uh, as you have a freedom as a musician, you know, uh, with your musical choices, you also have uh, freedom to define and, and to direct your life in a certain uh, way. So for me as an artist, as a musician, the question is, you have to ask you qu the question yourself, uh, what is a career for you, personally? And, uh, you know, for me personally, it's, it always has been uh, not to be on a, you know, on a cover of a magazine, not to be on TV. Uh, you know, for me, career was always uh, to, be, to stay in demand, that's for sure, but f especially to develop probably the whole life. So you have, uh, you have the chance to develop as an artist, as, as a musician. If you have the idea, of course, uh, you know, what, what do you want to develop? But, uh, you know, to stay on a high level, if you stay, try to stay as much on a high level as a musician, then, you, then you're popular, you know, and uh, you're important for other people and other people want to play with you. This is uh, what, uh, you know, so-called, let's say, so-called career is uh, all about for me. So I'm here maybe even much more not as artistic director, but, but as ambassador of all musicians. And, uh, you know, for, I think for most of uh, the people, career means very often the kind, of, let's, let's say, the kind of fame. Uh, it's, uh, it's not the real thing, actually, for all of us. Because, uh, you know, you, when you watch the uh, environment and the scene, there are so many musicians who, are, who look great on stage and then, uh, then, you know, they can, you know, make some funny things on stage. But we, as a musician, very often we go to the concert and we, and there's no, no sense in the music, no level. It's just, you know, show. And uh, unfortunately, very often this is what people call career. And that, that's, uh, you know, this kind of attitude also, um, you know, gets a lot of support of uh, people who are in charge, you know, of so-called careers of the musicians. Thank so, you. I, you know, if I would get the bottle with the gin in the bottle, I would, my wish would be, you know, to get some support and to get also support for musicians who really want to develop a real thing. Because, you know, there's so many, let's say, I think the, the, the most uh, signif significant uh, artist, uh, which is the, you know, which describes the situation I'm talking about is uh, a singer, American singer. Uh, what's her name? She was really big on Blue Notes. I mean, sing singing country and Western, and it's called jazz. Um, a female singer. Help Nora me. Jones? Nora Jones, thank you. So Nora Jones, she, uh, I think she got famous. Uh, she's a great artist. I'm nothing against, but she got, uh, got famous around 20 years ago and uh, at Blue Note, made millions of dollars for the label, probably saved, probably saved life to the label, but they called it jazz, and in fact, it is country and western. So the thing is, she, she, she got, of course, a lot of fame, but uh, she never, never was doing jazz music, you know? So that's the thing. Uh, Popularity doesn't mean very often, you know, that, uh, that you're really great. And if you are not popular, it doesn't mean, mean you are not great because you're not popular. It's, uh, you know. And um, thank you for, you know, for acknowledge me, uh, to, you know, uh, acknowledgement that I'm well known. But it doesn't mean that, you know, wherever I go, that all, all doors are open. Not at all. I, you know. Artists like uh, me who really want to, to try to concentrate on the real thing as we, uh, as we consider as a musician's artist, they, you know, the uh, doors are very often closed, also for young musicians, so. Thank you very much. So, so I mean, you know, get them as much support as you can so if you, uh, yeah. you make a decision. Our common ground is uh, rather large from reputation, fame, uh, playing live, uh, uh, being a part of, uh, of a movement, of an artistic movement, um, uh, being, uh, developing yourself, as Adam Pieronczyk said, uh, ha having freedom. Uh, this all builds our image of, of career in jazz. 
Uh, but let's move to, uh, to the public, to the reception, which is changing all the time because uh, our public is uh, changing. People are not so, not so, not so much uh, attached uh, to uh, one uh, specific genre as they used to be. Nora Jones is a is quite good, good example of that, uh, by the way. Uh, how is the reception of jazz changing in the recent days? How do you think? Um, is the audience changing, and in what way? Maybe um, ah, s starting from... I think about the audience, because, because you know, uh, being an artistic director for me personally, uh, at George Junior, it's, it's not the first experience. I, uh, you know, f my first experience was uh, uh, leading a jazz uh, festival in Morocco 12 years ago, two years long, which was very interesting. Then uh, I did the Sopot Jazz Festival. Uh, in Sopot, uh, near Gdańsk, in Poland, for five years. And uh, this is the third one. And uh, I think this is kind of a very similar situation, that you, you, you create the audience and you invite the audience you like to invite. People, that, you know, we are in Poland, we, are, we, are, we have around 40 million people. Of course, not all, all of them will listen to jazz and to music, you know, you know not all of them will attend. But you, you just, when, you know, you are the creator. You, you, when you create a festival or label or a concert, you want to promote something, you make a decision again. And uh, if you want to attract the people you want to attract you, there's no problem to offer them something. So, you, the, you know, audience is so, so different as the music as well. Yeah, thank you. Michael Wojciech? Yes, yes. I think it's, it's very controversial to say that it's Nora Jones is not a, not a, not a jazz, jazz musician or, or she's not playing jazz. That's the question. What 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 the jazz is? It's not controversial. Not it's really country and western. It's not jazz. Okay, okay. I will. I will. Some, uh, someone agree? <laughs> no, it's jazz. No. It Sorry? doesn't matter. Yeah, it's it probably I mean, doesn't matter. Yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't matter. She's 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 great. But um, if we talk about you know classifying, that's. Th then that matters, because uh, I'm you know in 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 the context of attracting people. If you sell people something which is uh, you know not the thing it's labeled on, you know if you if you sell country and western as jazz, then the people most of the people think they listen to jazz. And then when you offer them uh, a young band who really plays jazz, they will they go away. They they say uh, they will say no, but it's not jazz because. Uh, it doesn't sound like Nora Jones. Nora Jones, because Nora Jones is just, and that's the that's the problem. That's it. Yeah, I, I don't think I have answer for your question. What uh, what the uh, what the shape? Uh, how how it how it uh, uh, how it goes? Where it goes and and how it makes different the audience. But uh, yeah, bebop is jazz. Free jazz is is jazz. So 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 you you can't really compare that. So I agree that you. It's 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 not something you should really care about as a as a probably young musician um, to um, to to find what the people want to hear, but you have to find uh, what's your own voice and uh, yeah the style that you want to present the musician uh, the, the 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 public to the public. So so that's that's the important thing. And then you could you could shape the public, you could shape the the trend, and um, you could make it. Uh, yeah, in the front of, and if you are lucky enough, you will um, you will even cross the um, or break the um, the traditional audience of, of jazz because it's 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 it's. I think that yeah, it it will be small um, for every country and and it's it's never be uh, become a, a large audience for for a jazz, but in, yeah, in Poland we have we have uh, I think Leszek Mosdzer example. Who is um, who is great uh, great jazz pianist, but also known in uh, and and uh, and and successful with um, with the larger audience that that only um, not only dedicated to the, to jazz uh, listeners. So it's probably because he looks good. It's it's a part of that. Yeah. So so that's my my answer. Okay. Thank you. Let's move. Uh, Could yeah, you remind Kuchowski? me the question, please? Uh, how's the how's the audience changing? How's uh, uh, w w w is it um, uh, w is the audience changing uh, f first? And uh, and how how uh, um, how does it um, influence the the, the 
the, mus the, the musicians, uh, what should we do as young musicians uh, in this uh, evolving uh, image of mar jazz market? Well, I'm not sure how, how the audience is in Poland because uh, I'm working abroad mostly, mostly in Asia. So I could say what's the difference b between. The uh, I'd say I'd say uh, the trends are global now, more or less. Well, I'd, I'd guess it depends. I think. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's move to the to, the, to your example of uh, of uh, um, Eastern markets and. Uh, Asian markets uh, are interesting because jazz music, especially in China, was uh, maybe Adam can okay, say more about it later. The jazz music was forbidden till 80s, uh, and now it's uh, I believe still is something new for the people, and there is no such big competition as in as in Europe, for example, uh, as in Poland. We have really a lot of a lot of musicians uh, playing that kind of music, so. People are really interested into that kind of music. Like they really would like to know what is this all about. So first they 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 come to the concerts, buy the buy the tickets, buy CDs, and uh, everything looks like it should looks. For example, in Poland, like um, I believe the audience is not so big because like the market is overloaded a little bit. I believe there is. Sometimes much more musicians on the on the club in the club than the normal listeners. So I would say that's the that's the first difference. And I think in Poland and in Europe, like audience audiences, uh, we can we can we can say well educated. They know something about jazz music, about the structures, about the the idea of the music and. The Asian markets, like people just getting into it, so that's the most important thing, which impact the actually the the whole thing. Thank you, Adam Huang. Yeah. Um. Mm, I think that uh, I think it's to uh, I I needed to like like two legs to 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 talk about this. One is. Uh, uh, if you're a musician, I think that, um, and I don't, I don't know, I, I'm a bass player. When I r wrote my song, or I uh, invited some friend, we played together, or we rehearsal, and then for one concert or gig in bar or or concert hall, we 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 are not not really care about the the, the audience all the time. I think for me, for me personally. And uh, I never think about the audience. I just uh, play. What, what can I do? Just play. And the other, other like like I'm the, I'm the producer sometimes or director. So that's uh, complicated. You know that right now in my country, um, for example, in in capital city Beijing, I I live in there. Um, so I I used to invite it. Uh, Herbie Hancock and the Chick Corea, uh, Eric Trufas, Didier Lockwood, some big name, and uh, to my festival. So we have the office uh, phone number uh, to the service for the, the audience. If they have some question, can ask us. So every time, you know, they are there in, in my in my heart. Like Chick Corea is is my hero. I, so, but but every time when the ring really loud in my office, one day like like 200, 300 times, they are almost the same question. Uh, the piano player, the from the American, uh, he's good. We say, yeah, he's good, very good, and like that. So, it's the, it's the truth. It's the truth. And then one times, you know the the. Jakubo with us, we 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 collaboration together uh, in Beijing. We we, we arrange Powell, the uh, pianist. Yeah, yeah, Powell the from from Poland, a trio. So nobody know his name. Nobody know the drummer's name. No, 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 
Every, no, nobody know the bass player's name, even the power. Nobody know, just all one band, three people, young people from Poland. So we were already on the stage, they play a concert. So I saw that, the audience, some, some people there really cry that time. <coughs> and after the concert, we are in the lobby to sell the, the band, the, the album, or LP. It's so down, five minutes. So I think, and then, uh, in, right now my country, the, uh, we use the internet, something, use phone, it's crazy. So, so the, we call the ticket company. You know, we, every, everyone like me, if I uh, want to arrange a concert, sell the ticket, we must be with, uh, collaborate with a ticket company. I cannot set, sell the ticket. Must be a ticket company. So we can really easy to ask, ask the ticket company, give us everything, the detail, really behind in the, the computer, you know, the system. So I can see, oh, today we sell 1,200 ticket, and then who bought the ticket? How old? Where, where she or he live. So right now, right now in, in Beijing, there are all, all of the jazz audience is 25 years old around. All of them, 25 years old Just around. Great news. Yeah, I really love that. Because, you know, I remember um, when, I, when I was 20, 20 years old, that I'm, I'm the, uh, a student in the music school. So that the I first time uh, someone told me, in this world, in, the plan, in this planet, they have a music called jazz. That's my first time to, to hear about this. So my father, my big brother, my mother, they never know anything about jazz. So right now the situation is the truth. So young people, they're more interesting like uh, jazz. But I'm not really lucky, we are not really lucky. Not, they, are, they are not really, just the interesting about jazz. They're interesting. Anything new, new for them. So that's the opportunity for us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I have so many thoughts. <laughs> I'll try to be succinct. Um, I think the opportunity to reach people now um, is better than ever before, just with advent of technology and advances in technology and everything like that. Um, but that doesn't make it easier to reach people. Um, so musicians have to work extremely difficult to sort of cut through all of the clutter and make sure that you are reaching the, the people that your music will most resonate with. I know, again, talking about my market, in Canada and North America, we've also, it's also been exciting to see what's happened within the music itself because we're, you know, we think about people like Robert Glasper and think about people like Esperanza Spalding and think about people like Terrace Martin who are taking jazz and combining it with other music forms um, and automatically reaching out to new audiences. So someone that's listening to Kendrick Lamar now is actually much more likely to also be listening to a, a mainstream jazz artist just because that crossover is starting to exist. Um, I would argue that an, an audience member that listens to Nora Jones will never listen to Dave Liebman. I don't care how you try to sell it. That audience member is just, they've got their thing that they like and you can try to sell it any way you want to. They're not gonna cross over. So I think picking up on some of the other things that have been said, as an artist, it's really important that you stay very true to your own artistic pursuit and be 100% genuine with it because that's, key to bringing audience along with you on your musical journey. Because if you get up on stage, as Adam, you were saying, and if it's all just show and if it's all just superficial, it's gonna resonate with some people, but your career is gonna be, it's not gonna go very far sort of artistically. You might sell a bunch of records and all that sort of stuff, but fundamentally, to have a long-term career, you need to bring along a core and loyal audience base with you. And I think being completely authentic in your music is key to doing that. And then nowadays, if you can really truly do that and understand all of the, the ways that you can reach your audience, then, then you're gonna be in pretty good shape. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, we are supposed to be helpful here, uh, probably, with this title of the panel. So let's be helpful. Uh, let's move to even more practical side. And um, 
I'd like to ask you, what's the thing, uh, j young jazz musicians especially, don't pay enough attention to? And let's, let's treat this as an open question. To, uh, what's the thing that jazz music, music, musicians don't pay enough attention to? <laughs> First one from the public. One to zero for the public. <laughs> Let's move to the panelists. Well, I think this question sort of came up um, just uh, in the previous session as well, in, under the sort of context of what do you learn in music school. Um, and I think that music school is an incredible opportunity. I'm a trumpet player. I went to the University of Toronto and did the jazz performance program there. Um, and what I learned there was how to be, or how to try to be a jazz trumpet player. Great. <laughs> I mean, as a career, though, that's not going to get me very far. So um, I think whether or not musicians, it sort of depends on the conversations that musicians are having with their mentors, with their teachers, with their colleagues, and all that sort of stuff. So I don't think there's any one thing, but musicians have to be aware that there's a lot more to building a career in music than just being good at your instrument. Um, because you'll always get some gigs, but your development will really be stunted if you don't understand how to actually work within the, the, the industry. Okay, what else? Jakub uh, Krzyszowski. I think uh, at the academies, like uh, mostly, most of the young musicians are very well educated. They are, they graduate uh, prestigious universities and, and academies. Uh, but I don't think uh, in that school somebody pay, pays at attention what to do next with the career, like stuff like marketing promotion, PR activities, management, and that kind of stuff, like that kind of subjects. As for example, I graduate like a management school and I, uh, I, I had been learning about this, but I think it should be like a really important part of the of the education, just just to to show the people what to do next with the with the all the talent they 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 have and uh, how to how to lead the career. Yeah, and it's, I know it's, it's it's a trend to to now focus on the managing part of the of the musician's job. Um, but uh, of course, I think we we should remember that that the musicians should be first of all uh, great musicians, and that's that's the um, th that's the basic thing at the start. And and the management is something that they um, it's it's good to know about it, but but it's not his job as a full time job. Oh, I, I think every musician should be his own manager somehow. I think so. Like they should care about many things like not only about the music like this is my personal point of view so i think to yes 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 in general i, I agree but but i think that's the, the trend it's um, and it, it could um, could make um, a, you know misunderstanding here that that the musicians should really you know um, pay too much attention to that so it's it's also um, be useful if you um, if you don't have any uh, anything interesting to to show to the to the public but um, and um, uh, on a part of that I think um, what's important for the young musicians because they all want to be uh, skilled and and you know best uh, best level of of of, uh, of, of perf performing uh, and so on but what's important it's being a nice uh, person and the person that you have uh, to cooperate with other people. It's just, uh, it's, it's probably the first step of, of being your own manager, but, uh, but just don't forget to be, um, to, yeah, to be, to be a good and, and nice, nice guy, just it's like this. Well, as a musician, I, I don't fully agree with that because, you know, you, s very often, you know, people, Promoters say about musician, they this nice, this guy is nice, and very often this, that means that this guy is just polite, and he he will accept anything, anything that were uh, that, that were the nicest musicians, which doesn't mean they really can fight for their, you know, position and career. So sometimes we have to, hey man, you, not with me, please, let's stay serious to you know to each other, let's treat 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 each other well. So. Uh, 
it doesn't mean you know you have to be rude, but you know, respect should be on both sides. I think, uh, regardless, you are well known or you you you're young. That's uh, that's a good thing. I think. I think uh, it really helps as a musician. Uh, doesn't mean it doesn't matter whether you are young or established. That you are reliable. That you are serious. That uh, you, are, as uh, Joe said, you are authentic with uh, think uh, with the things you you are doing on stage and uh, around the stage. It doesn't mean anything, you know, when you do the show again, and there is no sense, uh, no, you know, no core inside. It will not work usually, or not work usually, you know, very long for a long time. And uh, on, the, on the other side, you know, I'm speaking uh, as a musician and at the same time as an uh, artistic director, not really organizer, but you know, I deal when I invite musicians to the festival. Uh, you know, I, it's also a comfortable thing to me when I ask him, some guy, even if they are my friends, not all, I don't, don't know all of them personally, but if I ask uh, a guy, it, it happened not, it happened already, not at this festival, but the former one, Sopot Jazz, you know, I had to ask uh, uh, quite a, uh, a well-known piano player to send me a picture and uh, biography. I had to wait four weeks. And then uh, there was, you know, I just received a short email. Yeah, I have no press photo. And then you get some picture, small like picture like that with, uh, you know, messy hair and stuff like that. You, you you can't use it. So this is, you know, kind of basic thing you really need to have, you know, prepared for everything. You just, you know, this is this is what you can call professional. This is the basic you can, you know, especially in these times, everybody. It's chatting with a laptop or uh, iPhone. You can even right now make a quite good, uh, you know, uh, press photo. So these are the basics. And on the other side, you, you know, uh, and this is uh, this is towards uh, promoters and and journalists too. I would encourage again everyone, especially the promoters who work with uh, state money, you know, with. Uh, uh, money which is not commercial. I would encourage everybody who deals with this kind of funds, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to lose. Don't be afraid to, uh, you know, to grab audience with music which is more demanding. It's uh, it's very often, uh, yeah, more authentic and you know, it's worth much more than the than the yeah easygoing things which sell well. That's that's it. I agree. Adam Frank, you got something to add? No, no, okay. And okay. Maybe, excuse me, one more thing. And uh, because very often, this is uh, my experience, very often when, we, when you offer something demanding and you, you're afraid, oh, how is the audience going to be? Very often the experience is that they, they just love it. And they say, wow, why, no, why nobody offered something like this to me before? I don't know, things uh, like that exist, you know? When I, uh, you know, I, I played in countries like, just recently in, in Iran, Iran, Tehran, for the first time. When you think of Iran, we, we you know we read in the media very different things about Iran. Nobody would think that people are is interesting for jazz music. I played their solo concert, which is quite demanding. Just soprano saxophone, no electronics, nothing. And the you know the concert was the venue was sold out two months before. And the, the first the whole festival was de dedicated to solo performances. Very you know very very demanding stuff. All all shows were sold out. In Iran, you know, it's quite amazing. I played, you know, in Kazakhstan, uh, uh, Siberia, very far away, you know, Philharmonic halls, packed with people who didn't, didn't, didn't have any idea about the music, and they, they were kind of afraid before. And what happened after the after the concert? I was not able to leave the stage half an hour long because the people came, you know, to us, to us, to the whole band, shaking. And I make a photo. I I don't know the music, but something. You know, something happened to me. They just they just soak it in, you know, because th this is fresh. It's demanding, but it's interesting, you know. Instead of the easygoing Starbucks, easily listening jazz. So which is like okay. Which is okay too, of course. We like uh, naturally uh, came to the subject of uh, managing or self-managing uh, yourself. But uh, let's come to media. Uh, we uh, let's pass to to switch to to, to media. Uh, tell me, uh, in, in the changing image of the media, uh, 
what's most important now for you? Imagine yourself still as a young musician, of course, uh, a very young starting musician. Uh, specialized media, uh, let's say mainstream media, or social media? Uh, and I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to accept the uh, answer that all of them because I'm, I, I'd, like, I'd like you to point uh, what's more important than the others. Uh, specialized, mainstream, social. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think it depends what do you need to, to, to reach. What do you want to reach? Do you want to reach a lot of bunch of people, a lot of people, so you need to work with, uh, with the global media, with the country media, if you want to uh, reach the the professionals, musicians, the music lovers, you go to to uh, music media and social media. I think everybody do this. Doesn't matter if this is a WeChat or Facebook or other platform. Everybody probably maybe 90% of people like doing their own stuff there, like promote themselves. But isn't uh, is it, uh, the question is is it is it uh, as important uh, in jazz as it is in uh, let's say pop music or electronic music? Um, is it is it any different uh, from other? Yeah, genres? the difference is it's it's much harder to to reach the the real I mean the the big companies like uh, like like yeah, like your company. Like uh, like mainstream media, it's much harder to reach that kind of media if you are just musician than you are a pop star or, or somebody who, who play different kind of music because uh, I believe like the audience is much, much, much smaller. So... <laughs> Uh, I don't agree. <laughs> but I want. I, I, I'm not going to tell you why, because I'm not. Uh, I'm just going no, like to listen to. Everybody knows to, that you to, to you're right. That you uh, you are interested in that kind of music, and and uh, I, you're, I you're right about jazz as well. But yeah, I didn't mention the 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 the, 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 the of course the, the the direct contact with uh, with uh, some journalists or. Um, the direct relations, or the journalists being also in social media, being also in some uh, specialized uh, context. But let's uh, let's come back to the to the to the, to the main question, uh, Josh. Uh, yeah, uh, ah, Adam Pironczyk, sorry. I think media media is uh, very important, and uh, just as an example, I grew I, I grew up in communist uh, regime times in the 80s. And this is this is how I came to jazz as a you know non musician and non jazz lover. Why? Because uh, during the communist times we just had one TV channel. Some of people had two TV channels, which means uh, you know I knew without uh, having any. I'm, I mean I used to study you know in a school classical piano, so uh, there was no no interest in jazz at this time. But I knew I already knew who Thomas Steinko is. I knew who uh, Zbigniew Namysłowski is, the big names at this time already in jazz in Poland. I just, I just was forced to it, you know, because uh, you switched on TV and wow, uh, there was Tomasz with trumpet, you know, playing something. And you didn't know what, but, but you know, after the second or third time, you, 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 you got interested to it slowly. And this is how it works. And this, <clears throat> this is what, what, you, what I you know, meant before, that if you offer people <clears throat> something, then uh, you, they have choice, then people get the interest. So media is very important. And that's why you know, the work of journalists is very important. Even how mainstream media in some cases, like <clears throat> the paradoxes every, every of... Media, every media. In my opinion, mainstream media is even more important than jazz magazines, for me. Because they have, uh, they could have, they could have much more impact, but they are just afraid. So if they, you know, lose a bit of, you know, the, they sometimes oversimplify things. Of course, they are. Yeah, or, or you know, this is. I think this is the, just a psyche, psyche thing. Uh, uh, you know, uh, in the human brain, that most of the people tend to go. We call it uh, off Japan in Polish, which is you know, the ship crowd. When one ship goes in one direction, the, the whole crowd goes like, 
the same. When you, when, you, when you drive a car on the highway, that's a traffic, and you see uh, a car in front uh, uh, taking the, the next uh, way, way out of the highway. You know, the next 50 cars, we go. Uh, he probably knows the way. And you go then half an hour, half an hour, and the guy stops at his home completely, and you're, oh, oh, that was wrong, you know? This is, uh, yeah, people tend to, you know, to, to, to go for the trends. So, you know, I consider journalists uh, are really very, very, very much responsible for, you know, for shaping and creating the audience, definitely. Okay, so I'll, I'm going to comment, but again, based on my experience in my market. First of all, um, I would argue that there's not much point in trying to compare musics uh, when you're talking about coverage. Um, I think if you're talking about specifically in the mainstream media, again, th thinking about where I live and work, um, the realities of especially print media being what they are, um, it is only the biggest stars that are gonna get covered, period. And that's just sort of the reality of it. So I don't think it's worth spending too much time thinking, you know, jazz versus pop versus whatever. Like that's just, for me, that's just the reality. Um, you know, there's no chance ever that a jazz musician is ever gonna be able to compete with Taylor Swift. You know, that's just the reality of it in, in, in where I live. Um, similarly, there's no point in taking your product and just absolutely spreading it all over the place because that's just going to waste your time. It is incredibly time consuming to create your own media lists and figure out who the people are um, or, you know, figure out what all the different outlets are and just sort of <laughs> spread it all over the place. Instead, spend your time figuring out who the voices are that actually speak for the music that you are doing. Um, so if I think about a great Canadian trumpet player um, now living half time in Berlin named Lena Alamano. Lena Alamano plays really outside, interesting, creative music. Lena Alamano will never get covered by the mainstream media, so she shouldn't even bother wasting her time. And she doesn't. She, she puts out press releases to those publications and those media outlets that are actually going to pay attention to what she's doing. She's going to target the people on social media that are actually going to care about what she's doing. And as a result, she's building a career for herself, a career that she has defined by what she does. So again, there's no, there's no right answer in terms of how to approach the media. All levels, I'm sorry to say this, but everything is important, mainstream, social media, et cetera. All of that stuff is important. Um, but I would encourage <laughs> musicians of every level, um, first of all, don't waste your time trying to promote your music to people that aren't going to care. And that's, again, that's just the reality of it. The other thing to consider um, and, and this goes with working with agents and this goes with working with managers, there's no right answer there either. But sometimes if you work with a publicist, especially a publicist who is known to the media, that can help. So and again, as a festival director, I get cold calls all the time from musicians that I've never heard of before. It's my job as the, the artistic director to actually pay attention to what comes in and try to sort of at least learn a little bit about all of these different artists that comes in. But if I'm getting a submission from an agent that I really know and trust, a manager that I really know or trust, or a publicist that I really know or trust, I am just that much more likely to spend a little bit more time checking out that artist. So a couple of things as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Um, I, I, I want to... Uh, uh, Talk like this way. Uh, if you are you are a young musician, we <coughs> we <coughs> we. <coughs> I think if I'm a young musician, I, I cannot forget when I you just uh, I'm a young musician. Or I I think you know right now in China, I think it's really different the situation like in Europe or in America. You know, in the North America, and it's very different. In my country right now, um, all the people use use this. We we have no newspaper anymore, magazine anymore. No, no way. So, so for example, like me, I I have so many newspaper, magazine, your APP. We use this. So, so right now, uh, I mean, this it depends on how many media's like how many uh, radio station or or newspaper or magazine they're interesting about jazz in my country. I think it's really, really a few. So that that means if if you are a young musician in 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 my country, these these few years, I think you should 
you you are you you should not lazy. You 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 are musician. You are you you must be not lazy to to use the 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 social media whatever you use or your phone your your how to say it, you use that uh, Facebook something like you you know my country we block that we 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 use WeChat the same so you are you are not lazy you you should use that to protect yourself so you need care about what you you do say what you need care and then you you must be protect your your music I mean if you love jazz you need to protect protect them you know sometimes right now in my country because you know my my country this this 20 or 30 years suddenly rich the people you know we have car we have uh, everything anything we can eat anything we can go anywhere you know and then so a lot of young people they so many magazine you know that I, 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 I watch there I read there um, drink coffee and the red wing and uh, take a book and uh, near your window, uh, join the sunshine, listen to jazz, something like that, you know. So, I mean, if you are a musician, you need to pr protect that. Jazz, not only that, that kind of thing. Jazz is an art, artist. It's not, it's not like coffee, wine, you know, this, it's not like this. So, I mean, if you're a young, young musician, like me, same. You know, these 20 years, I protect that in my country. And it's every time. So I thought, no, no, not like that. We have so many different music, you know. Yeah, that's Thanks a lot. From, from my side, it's um, uh, social media are very useful. Um, so, so I could only recommend, even if you are very young musicians, to create your your artistic page on Facebook. Because if I if I find a recording that I like and and you know find the the trumpeter solo uh, interesting there, so I would go to the to the Facebook to follow the trumpet player and to to see him in other projects because because I'm interested in. And then when I find only the private account on the Facebook, I can't really follow that, and I'm we not friends and so on. So. Um, so, so it's just a basic thing as well, but but it it, it helps me as a, as a as a jazz fan to to follow um, the uh, yeah, the musicians that I like um, with the social media. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm gonna just uh, quickly explain myself uh, um, um, because there was a question uh, from Tomasz Hanslik who is gone, um, uh, but I'm gonna answer this anyway. Uh, is, it, it was about about the mainstream media, uh, and uh, it, it it concerned um, uh, the, the 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 answer of uh, of Jakub. Um, so I I completely agree with the with the first uh, part of your answer, of course, that it depends uh, what we are uh, we, what we are about to gain, what we want to gain. Uh, we choose the media uh, wisely, but um, I just uh, protested against uh, uh, against uh, the view of the mainstream media as covering only pop stars. Uh, we are very lazy about uh, young musicians, about new uh, newcomers. That's true. It's probably not the best place to present yourself uh, being a young musician uh, entering the market. Uh, the mainstream media is not such a place. But, uh, but later on, uh, we are trying to uh, weigh the, the importance of uh, certain uh, genres of music. So uh, I'm going to finish that. Uh, we in Politica, uh, we, d we, we didn't cover uh, as uh, any anniversary of um, Marilla Rodowicz, um, Polish uh, famous uh, pop singer, but we celebrated uh, recently uh, uh, the an anniversary of Zbigniew Namysłowski because the weight of the, the of the person, the history, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, is uh, th this always attires uh, the the attention of of, of mainstream media uh, uh, later, but later on, of course. So. Yeah, I think the, the, the most important uh, point of reach the mass media is find the context. It's like uh, usually people like send the same information to all kind of media, which is, uh, which is wrong. 
like you should separate like the message and uh, send different information to music media, different information to mass media, and different one on Facebook. So yeah. ma maybe that's the point to reach the, the mass media to find the context to make the relation with the journalist to interest in his uh on on what he's doing on his job and I, I think we could discuss more about it but it's like a, a very specific it's PR it's quite an another another it. discussion opening here but there are, there are a few other uh, subjects uh, that are growing from from this uh, this one uh, most probably um have you got any questions maybe uh, it's uh, w if you if you've you got it's a, it's it's a, it's a good time to to ask them okay uh. hello um i'm mary james i'm covering the uh festival and the competition for london jazz news um i was particularly well two points really if i may first of all i'd like to challenge the the title, How to Launch a Successful Career in Jazz. I, I would say, actually, how to maintain a successful career in jazz. Um, we've all seen superstars launched as the next best thing, and then you look back on festival programs, you don't see them again. So please think about longevity in your career. Uh, sorry, these are points, really, which you can comment on. Um, the second one is you asked what was essential things for a young musician to think about. And I would say, particularly for the young musicians here, please think about um, your mental and physical resilience. That is not something um, you will be taught at uh, college or conservatory. Um, incidence of mental health problems is very high in, in all musicians. And um, I would ask you to seriously think about how you will cope with endless frustration and rejection um, of your music. So um, these are just two thoughts from someone who's um, been working with musicians over a number of years. Um, you can comment or disagree or anyone else can comment. Thank you. This was a bit brutal question. The second, the second one, especially uh, uh, just Okay, okay, let's go. Okay, uh, with all due respect, I think that the, the title is absurdical at best. I would uh, retitle it, you know, How to be a Musician and Survive, rather than There is No More Career. It's, it's, it's uh, image building and it's all bullshit. Really, you, you need to learn your basic skills, how to survive. Whatever the lady says is extremely important. Your physical and mental state is probably the most important because all the guys who really get somewhere are really tough guys. They can really sustain the pressures and so on. <laughs> About the media, just one comment. Uh, okay, you were chosen as the representative of all the whatever, all the commercial media. It doesn't exist anymore. Don't you know? Don't fool yourself. There is only one media, and this is the social media. It will replace everything else. It doesn't have to be Facebook as we see it now, or Instagram, or whatever. There are other forms. Netflix is a social kind of social media as well. It is growing. Uh, the only, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. It's it's endless. Yeah, but I'm just saying, you know, the, the social media is the only way, and all the young Polish musicians understand it very well. Believe me, they know who rules the social media, and they go to them. They don't even try to go to, to the commercial media. They don't send records to radio, and they don't go for Frederick. They don't give a shit. They know who calls... <laughs> uh, yeah, well, <laughs> okay. Some of them still do. Thank you for this comment and uh, coming back to, to the two questions, how to maintain your career and how to endure uh, in, the, in this brutal environment. I'll just tell my story very, very, very quickly. So I'm a trumpet player and I went to the University of Toronto in jazz performance. I came out of school. I spent a couple of years as a trumpet player and I thought, this is amazing. The phone is ringing and I'm doing lots of private teaching and this is super fun. Um, and at the time, uh, I'll be honest. At the time, I was dating a woman who was finishing off her Doctor of Musical Arts at Yale University, and she was preparing for her final recital. 
And I took an honest look at my practice habits and compared them to her practice habits and realized that if I was truly going to make a go of being a professional performing musician, I had a lot more work to do. And I was further honest with myself and realized I'm not going to have it in me to do it. And now, again, coming out of music school, that could be seen as a failure. But I feel like I took a different path, and I'm very thankful for still being able to work in the industry and do something different. I mean, for Pete's sake, if everyone that came out of school is, was a performing musician, there would be no gigs for anybody. So I think the mental health question or the sort of, the, the sort of personal sustainability question actually is kind of related to the career longevity question, too. Be honest with yourself with what you are actually doing. Be honest with yourself with how hard you are working at it. I have a tremendous amount of respect for people who perform full-time as a musician because I know how much work is involved, as most of us do in the room. And if you're not willing to put that in, don't do it because you will drive yourself crazy. But be a journalist, be a recording engineer, be a producer. It, you know, the industry is huge. And I think there's a pretty interesting cross-section of people up here on the panel whose skills do not reside only in being a player. So I think those two things are related. Thank you very much. Uh, who else uh, would like to uh, uh, answer this, uh, these two questions about brutality and... Yeah. I totally agree with Mary that, uh, you know, physical uh, treatment of the body is very important and uh, also psyche is very important, but uh, uh, I think this, uh, in my opinion, there is no guarantee. You can do whatever you want, but uh, always keep in mind, and I still, I turned 50 in, in January. I still feel like, you know, you guys uh, took part yesterday in the competition. You approached me yesterday, we talked a bit, right, at the club, and, uh, you know, then I talked to my girlfriend after, you know, I feel like them. I don't look like them anymore because I have a white beard. But uh, if you approach me, I, I feel like you know I am still a student, which is which is uh, one of the greatest thing in uh, you know in, in playing music as an uh, active musician because I, I make my living by playing only, and besides you know those those kind of activities. But I you know you can be sure I still feel like I am a student. Then I you know sometimes I have to realize I'm not anymore, but I still it's. I, you know, I'm, for me, it's very important to keep the passion alive and maybe to ask yourself, is, um, you know, is being a musician, uh, active musician, full-time musician, really the thing you want to do in your life? Because when you, when you get frustrated every day with everything, there are many of musicians who play, you know, a concert and after a concert, ah, blah, blah, it wasn't good, it wasn't good. It, it's no fun. Life is short. So, you know, if it's going, going to be this way, Maybe just you know, just be honest with yourself and ask whether you, if you, if you want to, you know, to stick to music uh, and continue to make your life like that. Maybe ask yourself, how about you know, to be educator and maybe play some gigs, uh, you know, at the venues you like, with people you, you like, and you make uh, your money as you know, um, you know, as a teacher, as a part teacher, maybe. Many many musicians does you know uh, do this uh, kind of uh, you know. Uh, living, and you you know just just ask yourself what uh, what happiness make uh, means to you, because there are so many ways again in life. You doesn't you don't you know you don't have to be on the cover of any jazz magazine. It, it's not it's not the you know it's not the only thing. It might be you know fun and you know you can show it to your grandfather, to your mother. I made it, but you know in the next month there will be another guy. And you think uh, on the cover, but this guy doesn't play. Is it really career? Is it really the thing? You know. So I think passion is very, very important factor. And um, yeah, I also know very, you know, many musicians who enjoyed a uh, really great career, and then they started to they offer they got uh, offered a job as a professor at the music academy, and the career is over. Many, most of them. Why? Because you get lazy. You get your your thousands on on your account every month, regard you know regardless you 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 practice you you wrote a tune or you went on tour the money is coming coming and you you get you know you get a bit stomach have your whiskey probably in the hand and oh it's fine I don't I don't need to do it anymore if you don't have it you know then you 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 know you 
probably have, uh, you might have more motivation to do, you know, to find another solutions and to, and to, you know, to create your life uh, maybe in the way you want to create. Because there's, you know, if some things are uncertain and you you are not too comfortable with yourself, this is very often a good thing. But uh, not too much frustration. If the frustration is uh, really, really present in your life every day, every hour, then that's something that's not correct too. So I think passion and you know, just uh, yeah, just the way, way is very important. Just the way, not not the goal, just the way. And I, I think Confucius, yeah, Confucius said, uh, you know, Confucius in China said a very uh, very wise thing. Uh, don't think about uh, how popular or unpopular, or the, uh, how popular you are. Think about whether you deserved deserve to be popular or not. And this is a very wise, you know, sentence. I like it a lot. With this, uh, we must stop, <laughs> Thank because you. it's a nice, uh, nice ending to uh, to whole discussion. And this is what you get money for as a musician, you know. I got paid for this. It's. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope that we were helpful enough. Uh, I don't know about you. I'd made. I made my notes. It's uh, a bit uh, too late for me to start to launch a successful career in jazz, uh, but uh, so I'm going to pass my notes to somebody uh, who, who I care for. Uh, thank you very much uh, for my great uh, panelists, uh, Adam Pierończyk, <laughs> Michael Wyczek, <laughs> Jakub Przeszowski, Adam Huang and Josh Grossman. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Bartek Haczynski, and to all of you for this interesting discussion. And that's the moment when I would like you also to encourage to all the questions and comments, because that's the thing we would like to continue. Because we will continue for one more short presentation about these young artists who take part in this year contest, and I will ask again Michał Hajduk from Adam Mickiewicz Institute to continue, and this band, it will be Kwaśny Deszcz, what literally means acid rain. Bardzo was panowie serdecznie zapraszam. Okay, so uh, we obviously start from, from the video again. very interesting for me to hear uh, this young band from Poland. It's the fourth time for me uh, in, uh, in Krakow to Jazz Union Festival and uh, I have to say that AC Train is a, an interesting project that uh, uh, links um, free jazz, uh, uh, contemporary music um, and I think that uh, did they have a good future? Okay, here we go. So, uh, you haven't been here before. This is, uh, this is a magic hat. And we got some numbers inside. So, each one of you, these numbers means questions. Each one of you take one number. Seven.
okay, imagine you just got a great financial award. Like you got, you got a lot of money coming from heaven. What would be your idea how to effectively use uh, those money to launch your successful career? <laughs> how about that? Oh. The money is not a problem anymore. You got really heavy, you so, know. So when the many, uh, money mm, isn't a problem, maybe the next problem uh, will be planning. <laughs> 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 Tours and spending uh, money. Spending money. Obviously, spending, yeah. but which way? New car. <laughs> Recordings, maybe. I A think. lot of instruments, I think. <laughs> oh yeah, I need better instrument. <laughs> uh, but it's it's hard uh, hard to say uh, how to spend a lot of money because. Uh, couldn't There's imagine a lot of a lot of opportunities to to do it i think uh, the best way to um, to spend it but uh, i don't think uh, we would need uh, a lot of uh, hundreds of thousand dollars to to have a good manager and uh, record a great label in right. great studio and it's uh, like good starting point for uh, for career uh, I can say now uh, that, uh, besides this this uh, question, apropos uh, uh, recording an album, we have uh, plans to to release our album in uh, in February. We have uh, uh, we have uh, our songs recorded and. Uh, Almost everything is done, yeah. so yeah. we are we happy about it. Everything but must mm. to start. And it is uh, it is hard to think about future and dreams and some and some uh, for now impossible things uh, uh, such as million dollars, <laughs> uh, because we concentrate on on um, what we do now and about here and now where we live and what we can do. And uh, money is isn't a very, a very uh, tough problem for now. Uh, time is. You're okay with money. Uh, really? <laughs> 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 it isn't that I have uh, enormous, uh, uh, enormous sum of, uh, of of money. But uh, mm, of course, money is very helpful. But time and an idea is uh, the. Much, impor uh, much important. Much important. Yeah. More important uh, for that. Yeah. yeah you mentioned uh, you mentioned manager, and I totally agree. Mm -hmm. uh, relation between artist and manager is not about money, but the but the human level factor. Yeah, and good someone who will be in one hundred percent arranged for that for that uh, band and for organizing uh, concert and everything. It's very hard to do it uh, by ourselves. When it we have to play music, we have to uh, earn, earn money for uh, for our living, and uh, practice and and do uh, everything and and live. <laughs> yeah, I think the mo most important is uh, position in environment. And you know, for example, now every club. Don't care, you know. We booked about uh, young bands, yeah. Yeah, young it's bands yeah, without yeah. True. Uh, album released, and you know uh, we booked a concert, and they they, they have cancelled. For, uh, for example, concert before two days yeah. before the show, and, and it's it's a problem to yeah. uh, to to get. Uh, Get position uh, in in music but it's also a problem about not having good manager. Yeah, <laughs> also. But also. this is obviously a general problem because there are way way more talents around than than uh, good good and dedicated managers. It's it's double. It's it's more difficult in a section of music which is not commercial. So this is something you obviously need to deal like everyone else's uh, deal with. Uh, this is about managers. Um, 
since I lost my point, I guess I'm going to go to to uh, next next question, which was oh, basically I know I got it back. Um, I think this question wasn't about money, but there was a hidden agenda in this one, and um, it was more about future thinking and actually having a dreams, which you said like there is a little problem with having a dreams. Uh, I won't ask you why, but um, the question is actually leading you to a point where you where you have a vision, what you want to achieve in the future, and but you possibly don't have the money to go there. And what if the money comes, uh, and then you uh, know exactly what you're going to do next? So basically, uh, I think uh, neither there are money or not, uh, you have a free time and free mind to think and design things for for a future. Um, okay, the next question was number twelve, right? Yeah. So sky is the limit, and uh, if you if you would uh, be able to perform with any artist, any artist who who that be, you know, who who you would like to oh. share stage with? <laughs> Two Hard days ago, question. it was there was concert uh, with Ethan Iverson and Mark Turner, and, and I was so impressed uh, because I love Bad Plus, and Ethan Iverson is an icon for me that is a completely musician and a complete musician, but but uh, the way he he improvises and the way he is. Uh, Sometimes funny, sometimes very, uh, sometimes very. Uh, he's always sincere about his music, and it's uh, wonderful for me. So I think Ethan Iverson is uh, one of those persons I would like to play with. Thank you for that answer. Anyone else? I had the dream to perform with Tomasz Stanko, which now is obviously. That would be difficult. Yeah, but, but it was my biggest dream because but, I loved uh, his music. It's actually more more and more common that the holograms are performing, and I think this is also one of the aspects of the future of music, pretty much. However, terribly that sounds for you. I think it's just happening already, and uh, yeah, from that perspective, it's, it's it might possible. be possible. Yeah. It's possible, but if it could be true <laughs> playing you know I, I don't think so okay i pretty much uh, appreciate the the element of being being honest um i'll switch to the last question we have which is philosophical how would you describe the main reason for existence but of course not i'm not asking you where 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 are you coming from and yeah. uh, why do we breathe uh, but, uh, you know, like your artistic existence. Um, basically, why do you do what you do? For me, we the love it. most <laughs> important is to bring people joy and emotions. And maybe tears and it's... Tears? <laughs> <laughs> Blood and people. sweat as well? <laughs> yeah, of course. Some energy and... Mm, for the performer, uh, <clears throat> for me, it's the best moments in, in my life when it's fire on stage. We 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 we're playing and it's it's fire and mm, it's connection with the audience and the energy is coming from them. F f yeah, it's it's beautiful feeling. It's uh, I think a, a problem. Because uh, in all our uh, education process and uh, uh, getting better in our instruments, playing and uh, thinking about music and uh, learn harmony or, or something, ever, everything else. Technique. Uh, technique. We scales. Scales. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we forgot uh, why do we do, th uh, do that? Because uh, uh, at uh, a starting point, we uh, did it only for ourselves. Mm, and uh, 
after after college after studies uh, the the point is the same and uh, now i uh, think very much about it uh, now when i'm 26 uh, and play saxophone i don't know uh, 14 years or 15 uh, and i think i think the better way to use music is uh, to bring bring it to people because it isn't for us to to play it it's uh, for for the audience to forget about uh, problems that we have uh, every day the uh, emotions some bad emotions uh, that uh, are with us and uh, be uh, be there listen to music and uh, forget about everything uh, the healing process is very, very interesting in in music, and it's uh, great to uh, to think about music therapy or something, which is, uh, for example, John Coltrane played music, and uh, every uh, not not everyone, but there were some people who uh, felt uh, healed after the concert. So it is the biggest dream I have had ever to uh, bring those emotions to concert. And, and uh, I don't know, but maybe, maybe make uh, people feel better, make them better person. I don't know, something like that. Yeah, it's, Words. Uh, it's something like touching untouchable, something touching mystical things to playing especially jazz like for me and it's it's why we and why we want to um, to have contact with with any uh, arts like poem uh, it's like for me uh, translation poem <laughs> for um, for understanding it's like why you do that it's exactly that's the poem to be poem to to don't translate it to uh, common language and it's for me like um, it's similar in in jazz music and it actually uh, all kind of music all music. Music, music yeah all music and like yeah, but how do you relate uh, translation of poetry to to the music musical ground? Yeah, yeah. Uh, could you repeat? Uh, wh 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 how how do you how do you uh, relate the uh, per uh, poetry which is which is uh, translated to to your musical ground? Like, uh, um, how do you understand? Okay, it? um, it's. Uh, mm. Like the music translation, what what that would be. I don't know, maybe... The point is... <laughs> to... To don't think about too much why he played that way or something like that. What, what it means... And, I don't know, harmonically or something like that. To, but everything we play it's because we want to achieve something mystical in music for me it's it's my approach to play especially i agree <laughs> yeah especially especially uh, improvising music so i can um, i cannot agree more heart over mind uh, I think we, we made pretty well uh, with this one. Uh, do you have any questions, beautiful people? Don't be shy. This is a time for questions. Okay, no questions, so uh, I'll give you a little bit more time to think about questions, and I'll bring uh, the second monster from the closet. And... Here we are. It's about the challenge. Challenge. It's the best. Yeah. Prepare for the wars. 
No. I guess not. Life again. Oh, well, yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> so we have um, classic elevator pitch. You get, you, um, any of you wanna, uh, wanna join this, this part as a, as a second site? It might be you. Elevator, I'll, I'll introduce. Uh, elevator pitch is about a situation when you meet this lady in the elevator and you ask each other, who are you? You realize who are you to each other and then you get as little time as it gets to to get to a level up or level down, whatever you go, to introduce yourself in a full way, like trans, uh, um, express all necessary information without any spur stuff. So you get a few seconds to you know, digest this one and please introduce yourself for the bet. Thank you very much. Don't you? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Why did I volunteer for this one? Hello, um, I'm Mary James. I'm writing for London Jazz News um, about the event, but I wear many hats. Um, after a lifetime working in IT, I found myself working in jazz, working with musicians, helping them find tours in the UK, and more importantly, finding the money to go on tour, because in UK the fees are low, so you need uh, grant funding. I was also the manager of a Polish guitarist for three years, which was the best job I ever had. Um, and what else do I do? Well, I bring project management skills to everything I do. I was a project manager in IT for 20 years. That's something I can help uh, young musicians in planning a tour and planning a career. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, nice to meet you. I'm Peter, it's, it's my number. <laughs> 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 and email. <laughs> okay, I'm Peter, I'm from Poland. Um, uh, should we uh, tell about us as a band or us each other? You heard it. Do whatever you think ah, okay. is proper. Okay, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we, we, must, uh, we must stop in five floor because there is a, a rest of my band. But now we can talk. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm the ba bass player, um, and I play in two bands, and we have not manager. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Oh, okay, it's five floor. Come in. <laughs> oh, actually, it's my band. <laughs> okay, uh, so I'm Kasper. Uh, I'm with my colleagues uh, Peter and uh, Stanisław Stas. And uh, we are from Poznań, we play uh, jazz and do other music as well. Uh, also, I'm writing uh, music for, for films and for dance theater and some such stuff. And I'm a little bit uh, amateur uh, music producer. So, uh, but we play uh, something like free jazz and it's our music that uh, it's influenced by very various g uh, genres, uh, and uh, we want to. We want to. Sorry, it's a top floor. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you get one more chance. <laughs> Hello, my name is Stanisław, and I love play the drums. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm drum player. <laughs> Right, thank you for your contributions. Um, I would say as young musicians, please prepare your one minute elevator pitch because it's terribly useful for everyone you're gonna meet. Um, yeah, and yes, absolutely. Um, and it's also something to bear in mind, it's the same text you're going to use to sell yourself to a promoter in an email. So it's having those 60 words which blow me away and say, I want to work with you. I want to listen to your music. So yeah. um, please, that's your homework for tonight. Okay. It's your <laughs> elevator pitch. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. For advice. Uh, so you know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I forgot to actually introduce you. So you, you, we can do it as a, as a, as a last part. So you name. 
A name. <laughs> Yes, I'm Stanisław. Uh, Kacper, Kacper Krupa. And Piotr Cienkowski. And one more thing, this thing called elevator pitch is happening right here, right now. So uh, the sooner you start homework, the better, actually. Yeah. Thank you, you did great. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michał. Thank you, guys. And now I would like to invite you to the hall because there will be coffee and I guess we all need it very much. Please um, come here maybe in about 30 minutes. We'll see how it's going, but about 30 minutes we'll start next panel. <laughs>